Some people feel anxious when coming into contact with certain Jamaican plants and animals. Sometimes this fear is quite reasonable. However, there are some plants and animals that are completely harmless and people fear them without good reason. The reasons for the fear are not easily explained and are often based in superstition or people may mistakenly believe that these animals are vicious and poisonous. Some are considered bad omens and yet others are associated with spirits and duppies. The sayings and beliefs associated with these animals and plants go a long way towards explaining why some animals are reviled and persecuted, whereas some plants are revered and left virtually untouched. Let's take a closer look at some plants and animals that cause some Jamaicans to cringe in fear. Lizards. Many Jamaicans have a strong aversion to lizards. There are several beliefs that influence our views on lizards. The lizard, especially the large green tree lizard Anolis garmani, is associated with spirits, and it is said that duppies take the form of green lizards during the day. As such, it is considered very bad luck to have these lizards nearby, and many Jamaicans kill them on sight. Another lizard greatly feared by Jamaicans is the galley wasp. Galley wasps are slender, long-bodied lizards with shiny skins. It is said that their bite is deadly poisonous, and if bitten, you must run to the nearest source of water, because if the galley wasp reaches water before you, you would surely die. However, lizards do not bite or attack humans, preferring instead to flee. In fact, their small jaws are capable of giving only a weak bite. We asked Dr. Peter Vogel of the Life Sciences Department at the University of the West Indies about lizard bites. Well, if you have a lizard in your hand and you trouble it too much, it's going to bite you. But the bite is very, uh, it's, it's, it's a harmless bite, it's just a, a bit of a squeeze. So they can bite you if you capture them, but it is harmless and they have no poison. <laughs> Lastly, but certainly not least, there is the belief that if a lizard falls from a tree onto a woman, it is a sign that she is pregnant or will soon become pregnant. <coughs> this belief alone is enough to ensure that many women stay far away from lizards. Sometimes male lizards extend a loose fold of skin that hangs from the throat. This is called the dewlap. And in lizards, it is often brightly colored. This is not the lizard's tongue. When a lizard extends its dewlap, there is no need for humans to be alarmed. The lizard may merely be trying to attract a female lizard and at the same time send a subtle warning to nearby males to keep away from his intended mate. In addition, there are some lizards that have the ability to change color. Some Jamaicans have taken this to mean that the lizard is deceptive by nature and they are getting angry and ready to attack. But changing color is a mechanism that allows the lizard to camouflage itself from predators such as birds and cats and hides it from its insect prey. Some lizards may also use color change as a means of communication. There are 26 species of lizard in Jamaica, including the beautiful and brightly colored ground lizard Amoeba dorsalis, several species of lizards from the genera Anolis, and the pale gray croaking lizards Aristelia praesignis. The Jamaican iguana Cyclura coliae is the largest lizard in Jamaica. Despite its large size, the iguana is a vegetarian. In bygone days, they were hunted for meat. That and the introduction of the mongoose in 1872 lowered the numbers of the iguana to such levels that they were thought to be extinct. The mongoose destroys the eggs and young of the iguana. In the 1980s, a small pocket of these lizards was found to still exist in the remote hills of Helshire in St. Catherine. A captive breeding program has been established at the Hope Zoo with the aim of restocking the wild population.
On the whole, Jamaicans do not like frogs or toads. The ill feeling towards frogs may stem from the Taino folktale that says that hungry crying children abandoned by their mothers would turn into frogs. But perhaps the most feared and misunderstood amphibian is a large bullfrog or marine toad Bufo marinos. It is not a native of Jamaica, but was introduced in 1844 to reduce insect pests. The bullfrog can grow to 9 inches in length at more than 2 pounds in weight and possesses a rough warty skin. Their color is tan, dull green or black with a light underside. Jamaicans keep their distance from the stoad as it is believed that if you agitate it, it can spit a white substance that Jamaicans call kokobe. Kokobe is an African word meaning leprosy. If kokobe should touch your skin, it would give you infectious warts like leprosy, and if it went into your eyes, it would cause blindness. Children are warned to avoid the kokobe man in the Jamaican proverb that goes, no shie kokobe man han fitek shie mota yo yai, meaning that one must not be led to do what you do not approve of, that is, shake the hand of a leper in order to please others. In fact, the frog does not spit kokobe, but does indeed secrete a highly toxic milky substance from glands in the back of its head. This substance will burn eyes and may inflame the skin, but bullfrogs do not attack humans or other large animals and are generally a beneficial animal to have around, as they have a huge appetite and eat millions of insects per year. Pet owners should be cautious if they suspect they have toads in their garden, as dogs and cats which bite bullfrogs may die within a few hours. There are two types of owls in Jamaica. The large white owl tied to Alba, the barn owl, is found worldwide and is locally called critch owl, and our endemic brown owl, Pseudoscops gramicus. In Jamaica, brown owls are called patu. With their large, staring eyes and flat face, they are considered to be one of the ugliest of all birds. In fact, if one wishes to be really unkind to a person, they compare their looks to a patu, as in, you ugly like patu. Their silent flight and strange screeching cry inspires fear. It is said that if you hear the screech of the owl at night near your home, somebody in the household will die or will be in grave danger. The evil Jamaican witch or sorceress Ol Haig is thought to shed her skin and assume the form of an owl, flying into people's homes at night to suck their breath as they slept. She was especially fond of children. At the sight of an owl, some people cry, Salt and pepper for your mommy! As it is believed that all hay could be destroyed if someone found her skin and applied salt to it while she was in the form of an owl. Interestingly, there is also a belief that old cats turned into owls, as evidenced by the saying, Pusa my age turned a long time. Both cats and owls are associated with witchcraft. Another night bird that is sometimes confused with a patu is not an owl. It is the potu. This bird has a strong guttural call. And on dark nights, it can be a fearsome sound. The northern patu feeds at dawn and dusk on insects, but in the daytime sits very quietly camouflaged on a tree trunk or branch, and so has got the name Stand Up in the Day. Owls are among the most persecuted of birds. If their nests are located in daylight, they are often stoned and the birds killed. The loss of these owls is very unfortunate, as owls provide a beneficial service to the environment. Studies with owls have shown that some owls are able to consume more than 1,000 rats and mice per year. 
all these birds, the Jamaican owl or patu, the barn owl or critch owl, and the northern potu, are beneficial to mankind and should not be persecuted. If humans learn to live peacefully alongside owls, we would benefit. By keeping owls alive and safe, we ensure our own safety by allowing owls to restrict the ever-increasing rat population. In so doing, we limit our exposure to diseases such as leptospirosis, which is transmitted by rats. There are several trees that people are afraid of because of superstitions or an alleged connection to the supernatural. But unlike the case with animals, these superstitious beliefs in most cases act to give the trees powerful informal protection. This is certainly true of the cotton tree, Seba pentandra. The cotton tree is one of the largest trees in the forest. The largest specimens may be 60 meters tall, towering over other trees in the forest. They may live for hundreds of years. The trees have large white buttresses at their base, which stabilize the tall tree against forceful winds. They also serve to store moisture, providing a reserve water supply for the tree during periods of extended drought, common in many Caribbean islands. When young, the trunk develops pointy conical spines about an inch to an inch and a half long. The spines are there to protect the young tree from animals. When the trees mature, it ceases to produce spines, and the ones that are present on the tree eventually wear away. Once a year, all the leaves will be shed as the tree is deciduous. The flowers of the tree open in the evening after sunset. The fruits are woody seed pods and contain fibers called kapok. Kapok is light, buoyant, water repellent and resistant to rot. Before the advent of synthetic fiber, it was used as insulation in jackets and flotation for life preservers. The soft buoyant wood was used by the Taino people to make canoes and travel from island to island. The physical attributes of this tree are fascinating, and the folklore surrounding the tree is equally so. The cotton tree is said to be the traditional home of spirits. To throw a stone at the base of the tree was to invite sickness and bad luck. The fearsome female spirit Ol Haig is said to hang her skin on the branches of the cotton tree when she travels about at night, and the rolling calf is said to inhabit its roots during the days when it is not roaming. It is also told that when the English invaded Jamaica in 1655, the fleeing Spanish buried their treasure under cotton trees, killing the slaves they used to dig the hole and setting their ghosts to guard the treasure. Anyone trying to dig for this treasure would surely meet with great misfortune. It is believed that the evil spirits that dwell in the tree can be summoned by obia men to do harm to others. But ancestral spirits also dwell in the tree. Because of the many beliefs surrounding the cotton tree, persons who must remove large cotton trees will not cut the tree without first giving an offering of rum to the spirits to ensure their safety and the safety of the users of the wood. Sometimes a ram goat or chicken is also killed and the blood spilled as an offering. In spite of the superstitions, large cotton trees provide such wonderful shelter from the sun that historically they were used as meeting places and rest stops and became famous landmarks in their own right. In fact, the capital of St. Andrew, Halfway Tree, was named for an extremely large cotton tree that used to be at this spot. It was called Halfway Tree as it was the rest point for soldiers marching between Greenwich in the hills of St. Andrew where the soldiers had their camp and the fort in Spanish town. The tree is thought to have existed there before the conquest of the island in 1655 and until 1865. Cotton trees are habitat for a number of animals. The impressive height allows birds to roost in relative safety Bats and bees are attracted to the flowers and fruit, frogs are high up in the canopy, and reptiles such as lizards and snakes are often found in the hollows of its trunk. 
One strange insect found in association with cotton trees is the giant metallic wood boring beetle Euchroma gigantea. The name Euchroma gigantea translates to colorful giant. The cotton tree is not the only plant that inspires fear in the superstitious. Certain plants may also be used as markers for ancient graves and as such have become associated with death and duppies. Usually a plant with some unusual feature is used as the grave marker. The calabash, distinctive because its fruit are borne directly on the trunk of the tree, was often used to mark the grave site of ancestors. Some persons plant crops near to the tree with the hope that the ancestors will watch out for their crops. Predialacinists, beware! Even crotons, popular in many gardens, have been discriminated against because they were used to mark the site of graves due to their vibrantly colored foliage. The lovely smelling night blooming jasmine is also avoided by some and removed from gardens because it is thought to attract duppies with its sweet smell at night. As such, some persons will not tolerate them near their houses. Some people love to be frightened whilst others cannot take a joke. Seriously, what we hear about a plant or animal influences the manner in which we care for plants and creatures in the environment. So it is important to separate fact from fable so that fairness and not fair will rule in our interactions with nature. Mm-hmm.